Hey people, like worst librarian ever. Don't know how the second half of this book did not get uploaded. Didn't even see the comment until yesterday, even though it was posted two days ago, that one of my friends was looking for the other half of the book. What a disaster. What a mess. All right. But that's fine because we're going to do it right now. All right. We're going to bust it out. We are uh, starting on chapter seven. All right. My bad, guys. Let's do this. Chapter seven. Officer Fallon's trade. The kids thanked Mr. Paskey. As they were leaving, he said, happy reading. Happy reading. <laughs> this is a mess, Ben said. It really is. Nobody thinks Lucky stole those dumb leprechauns, but he's still in jail. Bradley could see the police station across Main Street. Let's go talk to Officer Fallon, he said. Tell him what you told us. Maybe he'll believe you if we go with you. The six kids crossed the street to the police station. Inside, they walked down a quiet hallway. They passed a room where two officers were dressing a leprechaun statue in a tiny police suit. Officer Fallon was at his desk sipping tea when the kids walked in. Hello, gang, he said. What brings you here? We came to see Lucky, Ben said. Is he okay? Your brother is very comfortable, Officer Fallon said. We want to confess, Ralphie said. Officer Fallon raised his bushy eyebrows. What do you mean, Ralphie? We did it, Ben and me. Ralphie and Ben told Officer Fallon how they had stolen all three leprechauns the night before. We hid them in Lucky's closet, Ben said. We were going to return them honest, Ralphie cried. We did it to get back at Lucky, Ben went on. We were mad at him, so we lied and told Bradley that it was Lucky. And we're really sorry. Everyone got quiet. Bradley could feel his heart beating too fast. Officer Fallon, who told you that Lucky stole the leprechauns, he asked. We talked to Mrs. Wong and Mr. Paskey, and they said they didn't tell you. Officer Fallon looked at Bradley. He tugged on an earlobe. He smoothed his mustache. I'm afraid I can't tell you, he finally answered. Not while an investigation is going on. Officer Fallon stood up. Ben and Ralphie, you're very brave to admit what you did, he said. Now just go get the statues and return them to their owners. Then I'll let Lucky out of jail. But that's the problem, Ben said. The leprechauns aren't in the closet anymore. Well, where are they? Officer Fallon asked. We don't know, Ralphie wailed. Bradley thought the poor kid was going to burst into tears. Officer Fallon looked down at the O'Leary brothers. You don't know where the leprechauns are? No. Ben mumbled. Someone stole them from Lucky's closet, Ralphie said. Oh, now I see, Officer Fallon said. First you stole them, then you hid them, then someone else stole them, right? Right, Ben and Ralphie both said. Some stranger walked into your house and took three leprechauns from Lucky's closet, Officer Fallon asked. Ben and Ralphie nodded. Well, we have a problem, Officer Fallon said. I can't let Lucky out of jail until the stolen goods are returned. But, but we don't know where they are, Ralphie stuttered. Officer Fallon sighed. Sorry, kids. That's the way it will have to be. We'll make a trade. When you give me the leprechauns, I'll give you Lucky. Ay, ay, ay. Chapter 7 questions. Number 1. What are the kids going to do at the beginning of the chapter? What are the kids going to do at the beginning of the chapter? Question number two. Yes, pause it. If you're not finished, you could pause it. Question number two. What is Officer Fallon doing when they arrive? There's a clue. Look on page 34. What is Officer Fallon doing when they arrive? Question number three. What do Ben and Ralphie tell Officer Fallon? I'm looking at the questions on my computer. Number four, why can't Officer Fallon tell them who told him Lucky stole the leprechauns? Number five, what happens at the end of this chapter? 
And number six, what do you predict will happen next in the story? No right or wrong answers on prediction questions. You can pause the video while you finish answering those because I'm just going to keep going with chapter eight. Chapter eight. Where is Pal? The kids left the police station. No one knew what to say. Ben and Ralphie wanted their brother back. Bradley, Brian, Lucy, and Nate wanted their leprechaun back. At the fitness center window, they watched two women dressing a leprechaun statue in gym clothes. We'd better get home, Ralphie said. Don't worry, we'll figure something out, Bradley said. See you guys, Ben muttered. He and Ralphie trudged toward Robin Road. Bradley, Brian, Lucy, and Nate went to the twins' house. Bradley found a note from his mother. Gone shopping. Josh is in charge. Pal seems lonely. Play with him. Lunch is in the fridge. Mom. Where's Pal? Lucy asked. Bradley whistled. Pal didn't come. Brian clapped his hands. Pal still didn't come. Jeez, don't tell me somebody stole him too, Brian said. Let's go look, Nate said. The four kids split up and searched the house. Bradley checked the bedrooms. Josh was on his bed reading and eating a sandwich. Have you seen Pal? Bradley asked. He was in the kitchen when I made my sandwich, Josh said. He's not there now, Bradley said. Next, he went to the bedroom he shared with Brian. Pal's tail was sticking out from under Brian's bed. There you are, Bradley muttered. He flopped down on the floor next to the bed. Hi, Pal, come on out. Pal didn't move. I'll give you a cookie, Bradley said. Pal wasn't interested. Are you mad at me, Bradley asked. Pal didn't make a sound. Bradley peeked under the bed. Pal's big brown eyes looked back at him. What have you got there? Bradley asked. Pal was lying on something brown and fuzzy. Bradley pulled out the two sleeves. He'd cut off his old sweater. You miss your sweater? Bradley asked. Is that why you're mad? I had to use the sweater for the leprechaun. Just then the other kids walked in. I found him, Bradley said. He showed them the two sweater sleeves. Pal's mad because we took his old sweater. Brian, Lucy, and Nate got down on the floor. They all looked under the bed. Pal looked back at them. I have an idea, Lucy said. He'll come out when he gets hungry, Brian said. No, I mean about finding the leprechaun, Lucy said. Maybe Pal can find it for us. The other three just looked at her. He loves that old sweater, right? Lucy said. Bradley nodded. And we put the sweater on the leprechaun, right? Lucy said. Yup, Bradley said. Well, Pal is a hound dog. Detectives use hound dogs to find missing people. So maybe Pal's nose can lead us to the sweater, and then we'll have the leprechaun. Great idea, Lucy, Bradley said. And if we find our leprechaun, the other two will probably be with it. Bradley put his face under the bed again. Pal, want to go for a walk? Pal wriggled out from under the bed. Woof, he said. Chapter 8 questions. Number 1. How did the two women dress up their leprechaun? Look on page 38. How did the two women dress up their leprechaun? Number 2. Where did Bradley's mom go? Where did Bradley's mom go? Number three, where was Pal hiding? Number four, why is Pal mad? Look on page 41. Why is Pal mad? Number five, what is Lucy's idea? And number six, what do you predict will happen next in the story? I'm going to do one more chapter right now and then upload. Okay. Good plan. Chapter nine. Sniffing for the sweater. Bradley snapped on Pal's leash. He held the sweater sleeves under the dog's nose. Find the sweater, Pal, Bradley said. The basset hound led the four kids down the stairs and onto the porch. He sniffed the porch floor. That's where we left the leprechaun, Brian said. 
Pal tugged on his leash and the kids followed. They all cut through the school grounds to Main Street. Soon they were headed down Bridge Lane. He must be taking us back to the O'Leary's house, Nate said. At the big blue house, Pal went straight to the red wagon. He sniffed it all over. Just then, the front door opened. Ben and Ralphie came out. What's going on? Ben asked. Pal is helping us find our leprechaun, Bradley said. He led us here. He knows you put it in your wagon, Lucy said. He's right, Ralphie said. Can you let Pal sniff Lucky's gym clothes? Bradley asked. <laughs> Ralphie giggled. Sure, but they're pretty stinky, he said. Come on in. Pal and the four kids followed Ben and Ralphie inside. A bunch of red-headed kids were playing hide-and-seek. The fairy princess leprechaun stood in a corner. Lucky's room is down the hall, Ben said, leading the way. The bedroom was messy, but the bed was made. Pal went right, went right to a closet door. He sniffed and barked and scratched at the door. Ben opened the closet door. The floor was covered with gym clothes. This is where we hid them, Ralph said. So somebody snuck in here and stole them, Nate said. I wonder who. Do you keep your front door locked? Bradley asked the two brothers. Ben and Ralphie shrugged. Mom takes care of that, Ben answered. I guess she locks it at night, but during the day she leaves it unlocked. Pal left the closet and headed through the bedroom door. His leash trailed behind him. The six kids followed. Outside, Pal bolted for an old car sitting in the driveway. He put his front paws on the car door and started barking. Maybe the leprechauns are in the car, Nate said. That's Lucky's car and we already looked, Ben said. He opened the car door. Pal jumped inside. He sniffed all the seats. He found a french fry and gobbled it up. Then he barked. Maybe Pal thinks we're looking for Lucky, Lucy said. Bradley pulled Pal away from the car. He let him sniff the sweater sleeves again. Find the sweater, he told his dog. We already know where Lucky is. Yeah, he's in jail, Ben said, and it's our fault. Pal sat on the driveway. He looked at the kids. He looked at the car. Then he went to sleep. Chapter 9 Questions Number one, why does Pal sniff the red wagon? Page 44, why does Pal sniff the red wagon? Number two, where had Ralphie and Ben hidden the statues? Where had Ralphie and Ben hidden the statues? Number three, when they got outside, what did Pal run toward? Page 45. When they got outside, what did Pal run toward? Number four, what did Pal find in the car? What did Pal find in the car? And number five, what happens at the end of this chapter? I'm going to stop this video here. And then the next video will be the rest of the book. Okay, so do those questions and I'll see you guys in a minute.